Yo, 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 yo. Let's check if the microphone is correct. It seems to be alright. It seems to be correct. Right. <sniffs> Round one has started two days in. Some pretty cool sketches happening on the uh, Discord. I see that some people are bar are straight out of the gate active, which is cool, which is great. Uh, yeah, it seems to be well received around. People seem to be happy about it. We'll see how it goes. Probably be good. Probably be good. Um, so uh, I was thinking w what kind of thing uh, I should paint today. Hey Zelin, how's it going? Good morning. What would you like me to paint today? <laughs> what? What? Pretty warm day today actually. Quite nice. Ish. Warm. Warm. Warm day. Yeah, it, it's so cool to see um, everyone's uh, entries so far on um, Unreal Tournament. A Bengeless. Mech Monkey sh Shaman. Interesting. It's a good. That's a good suggestion. Um, like I said, it's so f cool to see everyone's entries on Discord. Makes me want to do the topic too. Um, but I mean, obviously, if I would do it with you, you would, you would get help. So obviously, I can't <laughs> because it would be. Um, cheating uh, but I think what I will do though is when round one is over I will I'll be doing round one's entry so I'll kind of stack behind you I think that will be cool I think that will be cool <laughs> see Alan, you got it came from nature on your mind <laughs> Alright, if there is no other suggestions, we're go, going to go with Bengeless. Bengeless topic of mech monkey shaman. Shaman! Shaman! Ah, oh, stretch that. Joints out. A resilient master. How is it going, O oh, master? Oh, the person that's significantly more resilient than all of the other mere mortals. All right, we're going to run with the bengeless topic. Mech monkey shaman. Mech monkey shaman. Oh, you're warming up with coffee. That's fantastic. That's a good man. Good man. Bengeless, congratulations. You won by default. No one else had any ideas. Let's go. So I think I'll do a kind of a more of a concept art thing. As in, you know, not with a background, but just pure, more pure design. So mech, that's a little bit like um it's a tricky um topic you know what like what is mech right so i don't really know to what degree but i'm going to try to incorporate mech as in mecca as in mechanized as in 
robotic. Where's the line of robotic and mach machine driven? Or uh, I, I assume robotic is replacement? No, because a robot is a self-driven, is a self, wow, but the self-driven thing is also not a ro robot, right? It is a, you could have a remote piloted robot, like the bomb disposal unit, right? That's a robot. What defines a robot, actually? What is the definition of robot? Because you can have a missile as a robot, right? But is a robot autonomous, though, if you have a bomb disposal robot? that you pilot. Oh, that was what I misclicked on. What is, let's Google it. Let's, damn it, let's Google. Define robot. Roboto. Don't define roboto, but robot. A machine resembling a human being and able to replicate certain human movements and functions automatically. No. Here's a better explanation. A robot is a machine designed to execute one or more tasks automatically with speed and precision. There are many different types of robots as there are tasks for them to perform. Robots resembling humans or androids. That didn't make me any, any more intelligent. Vengeless. Uh, yeah, I get your point. I get your point. Um, yeah, a mech monkey, in my mind, uh, similar to yours, is uh, not a uh, piloted that for me a mech is not a piloted thing because then it's a, like a, a suit or a robot tank or however you want to express it right so for me a mecha is self-driven it is a fully sentient war robot <laughs> Hey, Akagria, what up? Zealin, not sure. <laughs> Resilient master, yeah, exactly. So, in my mind, like uh, as I see it, Mecha is is robot, big robot machine, right? Mechanized. Uh, while robot is is the same thing. <laughs> Wait. Wait a minute. So what is a robot shaman? Shaman is like a, something that is has magical prop properties, like as in can foresee the future. Or what is the what is the properties of the shaman? Shaman can uh, foresee the future, can talk to spirits, has magic understanding of magic. What is a mecha shaman, a monkey mecha shaman? What what special properties do, do do they have? They have ability to to conjure fire. That's not going to be special for robots, right? They're mechanical. They can spark electrical hacking. That's more. Maybe the monkey shaman, mecha monkey shamans are have the ability to 
to uh, go beyond electrical circuits or or uh, traverse electrical circuits maybe so maybe all mechas are bound to their own AI structure, like internal AI structure, right? They have full control over it, but they can't go outside of it. Like they can communicate, but they can't affect, right? They can't jump. Maybe the mecha shamans can act as an intermediate So then the question is, how do they act as an intermediate? Are they freaks of nature or are they designed? I mean, one would say a uh, mecha shaman. I mean, a robot wouldn't do anything out of, you know, may, wouldn't break anything. So maybe it is like a construction flaw. <laughs> Hey Brandon, how's it going? What up, Brandon Crampton? Uh, Gria. Uh, I have discussed this before. I've mentioned this before. Imagine, imagine this. You go to a restaurant and you order food. The food comes out it's like, wow, it is smoked fish with, you know, hand cut strawberries and whatever, whatever is fantastic, right? It sounds like a super elaborate and then you get it and it's just kind of a shitty pot and they all chopped it up in bits and just thrown it into a pot and go, here you go. Here's all the fantastic pieces. Then you go, whoa. Or you order like, it's just... Um, just a grilled fish on the menu you order it and you go like holy shit this is the best grilled fish i've ever had obviously the simple grilled fish would you know you'd go home happy but on the contrary you know the next door neck table next to you <laughs> No, but it is, it is far better to do a simple idea really well than a complicated idea, mediocre or poor. But if you can scale scope up at the same time with skill level, you should always aim a little bit higher in, in, in well, assumed skill level than you have so that you push yourself, right? So you don't... Uh, don't simplify it too much but nevertheless um, it's far better to do some some I, simple idea really really strong it can trump against any co opponent that does a really complicated idea poorly you can easily win that way um, so that's something that you should consider you should also strive to impress so it could be you have an idea that it, but it's quite simple so how can you make that simple idea plus plus you know like like that this stupid grilled fish analogy maybe the spices are just perfect the fresh fish uh, you know it's put it on the plate in a fantastic way you know all the ingredients that are there on this simple dish is just perfectly made you know it th that could easily make you very happy gria the, i mean like a piece of lettuce with spices on wouldn't make anyone happy so you gotta you know you gotta make it special you gotta you gotta push it It all depends, I mean, like sketching, line art, super tight render, photo bashing, 
etc., etc. All of that doesn't matter. What matters is the picture as a whole. Some people are great at sketchy, sketchy style, and they can get away with a lot less, but that's only visually a lot less, right? Because they have practiced this technique, they are really good at it, um, and they can get more for less because of the mileage they have, right? And if just because you go sketchy doesn't make, make it good, but it can also be really, really good. Look at some really good sketchy artists. They are the living proof of it. <laughs> but then again, you are not in, I would say in Unreal Bjornament, you should not try to impersonate any other artist other than yourself. It is really important that you go comfort zone, use your strengths, your go-to moves, make them really, really good, make it really, really fun, attractive, enjoy your process and you'll you'll go have a higher chance of winning in this competition but if you go out of your comfort zone experimenting trying a new thing in this competition the end result there's a higher percentage of chance that your end result is going to turn out shit you are also might be lucky coming up with a completely cool new idea and you strike gold and you win that's also a possibility. So it is a little bit, you know, do, do what you want, do what you don't dare to, or you do and gamble and, you know. Gria and Morphia, yeah, exactly. Um, one thing that to consider, like Morphia said, um, and Gria is kind of saying, is that the simpler and the more basic the idea, or the more uh, uncomplicated path, you're gonna you're gonna have two weeks, you know, which on paper is a lot, but painting time and living a life, it is not a lot. So you're gonna be very limited on time. Which means if you have a complicated idea, it's going to require much more time or luck in execution to get to the point where you need to get it, right? So you either go big and <laughs> go hard, or um, that could be taken out of context quite beautifully, or, or you, you scale it down and uh, then you can have time to to uh, push that simplicity really far because you're going to have limited time regardless. That headgear didn't stop making it look like a monkey. Let's remove it. I need something that kind of indicates a crown, but not horns, I guess. I'm not sure really what I'm doing here, but... Too much alive. It has to feel way more machinery. I have no idea what I'm doing. Hey, Captain Boss, how's it going? Zealin, yeah. Well, the thing is for me, right, what you got to remember is, is take the idea of, let's say, random random idea of a man entering a room that simple extremely simple thought 
a man entering a room, you can make that extremely, extremely different with camera angle, with light, with effects, combine it. But also what you could do a dramatically different is the action. He could come and enter the room through the window upside down with two guns in his hands or he can sneak through the door or he can come he can interdimensionally enter the room you know or he can just walk in or he can kick the door open or he and all these different combinations of different solutions with light camera uh, angle behavior framing composition props in the room what room is it <laughs> you can create absolutely thousands of different versions all dependable on different things so it's really really hard to know uh, you know how big you should go but it also comes down to let's say this topic it came from nature like the round one topic how far are you taking the topic you know, is the is the winning recipe that you're going to go for? Is it the unique take of the topic, or is it the uh, execution of the painting? Is it both? You know, it is it is quite different. Um, there is a lot of different ways of of doing this, and I think it's really important that you um, consider like line of action if you come up with a good idea where meaning you're going to tackle the topic in a unique way you're going to start considering okay how am i going to execute it or if it's a basic idea of the topic you're going to start considering okay how can i make this special what is the uh, usb usb being a unique selling point of a painting Zealin and and Gria. Well, yeah, I mean, that's absolutely valid. I don't I don't see anything wrong with it to to push um, push the con uh, the topic. It just comes down to like again, it comes down to your execution of the idea. And if if you really push the topic, you also have to consider. Are you pushing the topic for the sake of pushing the topic? Or is it actually a valid idea in terms of uh, a good, relatable uh, point of view? Because there's a huge chance that a lot of people, because it's a broad topic, um, there's a chance that people will complicate the topic, overcomplicate the topic. So it's like, they're overthinking it and making it unnecessarily complicated because it came from nature, it can be many different things. And the chance chances are it came from nature the way you solve it by being very unique there is a chance of it taking it too far away from something that's clear right not so much about the complexity that that really you know doesn't really matter in the sense of um, like you shouldn't have or should have a complex topic the more the complex the topic, the, the more accurate you have to be in the description, your visual visual description of, of it, right? So that when someone looks at it, other than you, <laughs> will, uh, will get what you're trying to say. 
if you look at like a really good overstated example, right, are these um, one one bar comics in newspapers that it used to be at least. I don't know if they exist anymore. They exist on the internet now, but it's like three frames of a comic, right? Of a of a point the 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 comic artist wants to make, right? Some funny joke or some comment on on current things, and. And they have three three frames to do it, and the delivery usually is super clear, super point on point, and uh, that is, I would say, uh, like an in that sense, an over simplified ver version of of the idea, where it's just more or less the same angle, and then you just you read what they're saying and they're like ha 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 funny, you know. Or even one single image of a funny scenario or a great thought explained really simply so it comes across uh, so usually what that is involved is like the thought itself is what's complicated and then the liver is super clean and clear that you don't it it gets told in an extremely specific way right so it's the kind of the same way when when you have a whatever you choose to do you have to make sure that you 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 put in the things that explain the idea clearly like i can tell i can show you i think one solution to a painting that i did that has a lot of a lot of things that you can uh, not notice and another painting that you can notice like this one it's very clear um, it's very clear what they want. Let me scale them down a bit so you see it. Like they're all looking at that one, right? They have a cage. He's pointing. It's very clear that this is this is the goal of the story, right? Capture the unicorn. And then you have this painting, which is a slightly different, right? But there there is. A story behind it and if when if you take time to look at it you'll start seeing the story right so here is like a uh, yeah this thing, you know, but like you see it's clearly like it's conf con confined in a thing that breaks and out of the source comes this right okay that's interesting and then you keep on looking like okay he seems to be in some place um, this arbitrary but then you can see photos of the same kind of white stru uh, white structure the yellow eyes which is his yellow eyes then a dog collar belt and a photo of that thing and him in the in the background there and there's another container like an egg and he's been sitting and drinking and or taking shots in the memory of him and he's he's finally uh, like contacting or respawning his lost pet and the topic is called reborn but so so it's like there is story there right there is a narrative there but it it it's only there if you look at it and understand it where on this one it's just to the point you don't even need to know the topic you don't need to, it is clear and i think both could work but it's a matter of like how how do you want to explain it? What things do you want to put in there? And that was just two examples that came to my mind, right? But I wanted to have a visual uh, explanation to it. And then you can scale that up in complexity. You can scale that down in complexity. You can scale up execution. And it's all, it's a very, very different. It's very, very different takes. But in the end, when you're doing illustration, it comes down to what's there, what you choose to include in your painting has to sing. It has to absolutely be harmonized and put together to the best of your ability.
because if it's not, uh, you're losing the intent, right? So step one would be, what's your what's your take on the topic? It came from nature. I'm not so not, not asking you to answer it, but consider the the thought. Okay, I what should I what should I explain? How what's my take on the topic? Right, that's step one. Get a clear understanding of what you want to say. When you understand what you want to say, start exploring it visually. Like okay, it came from uh, let's say spaceborn, random topic. Okay, so how do I want to show spaceborn? Is it born through destruction? Born born through love? Is it fighting? Is it war? Is it happiness? Is it um, birth of a new species? You know, what's my take on it? And then I go, okay, like birth of a new species, right? Okay. How do I want to show that? Is it intergalactic? Maybe it is the uh, first steps of a, of a new cute animal on the surface of a planet. And if I go with that, okay, it's going to be a cute birth of a, an alien on a planet. How? Is it through an egg? Is it up from the water? Is it landing on a spaceship? Is it, you know, then if you decide, okay, it's going to be birthed out of a machine. Okay, how do I going to frame that? Um, close up, far away, silhouetted. Um, there's so many different possibilities, so many different ways of doing it that you really got to, first of all, have a clear understanding of what you want to do. When you know what you want to do is how you want to do it. And only way to do that is either mentally brainstorm or visually brainstorm. And even with the best laid plans, shit will change. <laughs> You don't have a choice. It's going to end up different than you imagined. So you're going to learn, have to learn to roll with it. Make the best of the situation. Don't get uh, flustered. Just keep being happy and excited about the possibilities of making beautiful art and go for it, you know. Because it's easy to to feel like you're you're making things wrong, but it's so important to to stay in the happy zone. That's like why I am saying make go with comfort zone. Go what makes you happy. Because if you're going to switch to autopilot and just be happy making art in your style that you prefer, the chances are you're going to have a much better end result because you're going to. Like I said, you're going to be in the zone and be happy and not struggle with technique because if you're going with the technique you're good at, there's one less obstacle because there's many obstacles. <laughs> hey, Weeping Jay, how's it going? Zealand, more or less. more or less perfect explanation of uh, creative process. <laughs> Have the best laid plans ever, throw, sh throw paint on a wall and hope for the best. And then claim credit. Th that's about it, right? Let's add some classic shaman attributes. Hanging, to uh, what's it called? Not totems, talismans, talismans.
time is up. Oh, bananas. Uh, all right. Oh, well. Mechbunk is shaman. Pro 42, you did this yesterday. That's pretty cool. Bzzit. Captain Bose, yeah, that's a little bit like too little planning. You don't start a character, then force a scene in. That's what you tend to be uh, the bad, bad way to do things. Resilient mastery, yeah, absolutely. But in this instance, what I'm talking about is in a competition. At a competition that you have two weeks to paint something and you're up against another artist so it's a knockout art competition so you can't you can't experiment too much because you only have two weeks and you're gonna have to win over another artist Benjilis, great Both. I think in those instances, for in your like in your example, sketch the um, character's correlation to the environment out. It's sitting, driving. Why is the character in that scene, and how is the character interacting with that scene? Have that thought clear. Like, oh, he's he's fixing uh, the underside of a spaceship. Right. What's the coolest angle to show a robot fixing the underside of a spaceship? Maybe like a, a frog perspective, you know, like looking up. And then you have that perspective. Then go happy, comfort zone, sketch out your robot, because you're going to do great with it. But if you're going to draw a robot from the side, repairing something, and then you make a spaceship uh, forced into that perspective, it's not going to be as dramatic and interesting. You know, so it's a little bit like you have to hack yourself a little bit in order for you to utilize your comfort zone to the to the best ability. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the topic. Um, Angeles. It was fun exploring uh, Mecha Monkey. Uh, thanks for that. Let's find someone to raid. And then uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna go and design. Actually, design shit. All right, we're gonna raid Tim Remmers. Let's see what happens at Tim. I see that he's online. Have a good night, everyone, if you're in that part of the world. Have a fantastic day if you're in Europe. Um, see you tomorrow morning for another random topic. Hopefully something interesting. <laughs> thanks for today's topic. Uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Thanks for uh, a great chat. Uh, best of luck with your sketching. I'm going to do the outro that will take you to the raid, so don't go anywhere. Bye.